So I say good morning to everybody from All Saints, Harrow Weald. We're back in church. Sadly, not an open church. We're still closed for public worship. But today we're going to have our Palm Sunday Eucharist from In All Saints. We're going to be reading the Passion Narrative. A small number of our congregation are here to play the different parts. All will be socially distanced throughout the service. Our worship will begin in around uh, two, three minutes at 10 o'clock UK time, 10 o'clock British summer time. If you're wondering why on earth the service is starting so early, you should have put your clocks on one hour this morning. So it is almost 10. We're going to worship God on this Palm Sunday. And as we pre prepare for worship, Ella is going to lead us in the singing of the first hymn, which is, There is a Redeemer.
die and to rise again. Let us go with Him in faith and love, so that united with Him in His sufferings, we may share His risen life. We take here our palm crosses. They will all be blessed right now and they will be available for distribution around the parish in these coming days. Let us pray. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of His victory and grant that we who bear them in His name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I know that some of you have made your own palm crosses and I hope you are holding them high. The best I saw yesterday was from Ghana, but of course they do have the advantage of having palm readily available for them. Wherever you are, if you don't have a palm cross, if you're in the parish, let us know and we'll make sure that one reaches you one way or another. And now we read the palm gospel. Can I ask those people who are in church to stand, please? And hold your palm crosses high in the air. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it. And we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's a long time since I've said it. Please be seated. And now we will sing our next hymn, which is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Ali, you're leading the singing.
tribes calls on a cry. Oh, Savior, make Now let us pray our collect for this day. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in His suffering and in His glory. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know You and love You, that we may be found beside You on the way to the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. And now Linda will read our epistle. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And now some members of the congregation will join and we will read the Passion Narrative according to Mark. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not Not during the festival, although there may be a riot among among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another, in anger, Why Why was the ointment ointment wasted wasted in this way? way? For this This ointment ointment could have been been sold for more than 300 denarii and the the money money given given to the poor. poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, What she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where Where do you want want us to go and make make the preparations for you you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, (coughs) say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one after the other, Surely Surely not not I. I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. 
they went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there were a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him and at once said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many gave false testimony against him and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him saying, We heard him say, I will, I will destroy, destroy this temple that is made with hands and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, 
one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him. You also said, were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out to the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. After a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. And he began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you, do you with me, what, want me to do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why was that evil? Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming from the country to carry his, his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the palace called Golgotha, place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the, of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would, would destroy, destroy the, the temple, temple and build it in three days, save, save yourself and come, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him 
among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, Listen he is calling for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see what, uh, whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion, who had stood facing him, saw that, saw that in this way he had breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James, the younger, and of Jesus and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if you were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When, learning from, when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. One of the novelties of Palm Sunday, as well as having the reading of the Passion Narrative, is that there's no vicar giving a sermon. And so, I will not give a sermon, but I will give a pause for thought. The Passion Narrative is one of those stories which if we've had any sort of let's call it church upbringing, is something which is very, very familiar. A bit like the, uh, the Advent story and the Nativity. They are things which we read every year. And there's something about things which become familiar. You know, that, that well-loved coat that we can wear and forget we've got it on because it's so comfortable around us. I hope and pray that the passion narrative never becomes like that. Something which we almost take for granted and think, yes, it's a lovely story. But that is as bad as turning Easter as a season into something which is equivalent to bunny rabbits and chocolate Easter eggs. It's missing the point completely. 
if Easter is to be real to us, then passion is the word. Because there was true passion in those last days of Jesus. It culminated on Good Friday with death. And that could have been the end of it. But it wasn't. And the reason why? The words of the centurion. Truly, this man was the Son of God. That is why we read the Passion Narrative. Not because it's a rattling good story and it does away with the vicar giving a sermon. We read it so that we never forget that the Son of God came and lived as a man, died as a man, and conquered death so that our sins can be forgiven. For that, let us give thanks to God today and every day. Amen. And now I invite you to join me as we confess our faith in Almighty God in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Philippa will lead us in our prayers of intercession. And each time when Philippa says, let us pray to the Lord, our response is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We stand with Christ in his suffering for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, Lord, have mercy. mercy. For courage, compassion and wisdom as we face these anxious times together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For unity across all nations, for a world where prejudices and arrogance are left behind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who have kept us going over the last year, many risking their own lives to ensure our safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, who feel that God has abandoned them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray for all those who are suffering in both mind and body. From our parish family by name, Isabel Doreski, Asha Solanke, Catherine Jones, Siobhan Renson, Noel Bevan, Sheila Ward, Ray Padoni, Roger Siswick, Jane Slade, Margaret Vintner, Doris Weed, Peter and Jean James. Give them the hope and courage they need today and every day. Comfort their pain, calm their fears, and surround them with your peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
that we, with those who have died in faith may, f- faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We thank you for bringing us together today, for being our inspiration and the focus of our praise. As our Lord Jesus was obedient to the will of his heavenly Father, so help us to be obedient to your holy will for us in facing whatever task you set us for the coming weeks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy Holy and and strong, strong, holy holy and immortal, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. us. Amen. Amen. Can I ask those who are in church to stand, please? We're going to share the peace. And for once, I'm not just looking into a computer screen and waving into a computer screen. I will wave to those of you at home. But I will say first some words from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we've been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I wave a sign of peace to the cast in church and I wave a sign of peace to all of you at home. And if you're at home and you're in a bubble, by all means share a hug, a hug of peace. And now we prepare the table for the Eucharist. is here his spirit is with us lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Holy Father almighty and eternal God through Jesus Christ our Lord For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near and the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty, the power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more. The lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there, to join with angels and archangels, forever praising him and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts... In the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world the body and blood of Christ. Those here in all saints will receive the Eucharist in one kind. And as we share the Eucharist, I invite those of you at home to say the prayer of the act of spiritual communion. The blood of God.
pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray together, Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. And now our next hymn, My Song is Love Unknown. God be with you, and also with you. And now may Christ crucified draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you are, and with those who you love wherever they may be, today and always. Amen.
Well, thank you, first of all, to the volunteers who came into church and helped us to both stream to the homes and to share the passion narrative. And I thank all of you, wherever you are, who have joined us for worship this morning on this Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week. And in this Holy Week, we will live stream worship every day. From Monday through to Thursday, we will follow the stations of the cross, the way to the cross or the road to the cross. And each evening from tomorrow until Thursday at 6 p.m., we will have devotions following the path of Jesus to the cross. And then on Good Friday, we will have at 3 o'clock in the afternoon some prayers and devotion. And on Easter Eve at 6 p.m., we will have prayers of vigil and waiting. And then on a week today on Easter Sunday, the first Eucharist of Easter. Some of these services will be streamed from church, but let me be clear, we are not ready yet to open for public worship. The PCC met on Tuesday and agreed that we must have patience a little longer. Having said that, on Good Friday from 1 to 3 p.m., all saints will be open for private prayer. And if you would like to come, please do, but please let Philippa Jackson know beforehand so that we have an idea of numbers and if necessary, we can allocate times. If you do come on Good Friday for private prayer and meditation, please be thoughtful to others and don't stay too long. And also, there will be the palm crosses will be uh, near the sanitization uh, table and if you wish you'd be able to take a palm cross with you. Um, there will be a, a coffee corner this morning but it won't start quite as quickly as normal because our, our moderators John and Mary are here in church so give them 15-20 minutes to, to get home please and then they'll be opening up the, the coffee room for coffee and chat. Um, I think that's all for this morning. I wish you all a peaceful and blessed uh, Holy Week. As I say, you can join for worship every day. And if anybody in Harrowweald or even more distance wants to have a one-to-one -one consultation, it will be possible to speak with me via Zoom and we can have a Holy Week chat if you wish, if that is part of your tradition. And now I'll charge you, go in peace. Love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And ground 
His body lay, light of the world by darkness lay. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave He rose again. And as He stands in victory, since God has lost its grip on me, for I am His. Brought with the precious blood of Christ, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From my first cry to final breath, Jesus condemns my years to me. No power of Team of men can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Here in the power of Christ I stand.